One of the best ways to give feedback to your player is to flash the graphics of an entity to communicate that something has happened. For example, if it has taken damage, the player has interacted with it, or just to add a little extra juice to your UI. Howdy, and welcome to Game Endeavor. If you want to learn practical dev skills and improve the quality of your games, then subscribe and ding a ling that bell. You may have used the Canvas Nodes modular property to modify a sprite's color before. This works in a pinch, but likely doesn't give you the effect that you desire and may even look a little muddy in my opinion. To achieve the effect that we want, we're going to be using a very simple little shader instead, so let's get started. Since we're using a shader, we're going to need to add a shader material to our graphic. This is what will apply the shader to our entity. If you're using multiple sprites and want this to apply to all of them, then what I like to do is apply this material to the body's root node, and then I can tell the individual nodes that they should be using their parent's material. This will run the shader code on every canvas item that has this property set to true. Inside of the shader material, we need to add the new shader. Doing this will open up the shader panel beneath our main window, and this is where we'll be writing our shader code. I haven't covered shaders on this channel yet, but don't be intimidated by it. The code we'll be using is very similar to Gscript, and we won't be doing anything fancy. The first thing we're going to do is define what type of shader we'll be using. This shader will be going onto a canvas item, so we'll be using the shader type, canvas item. Take note of the semicolon here, it's pretty important. One of the big differences between this shader language and GDScript is that each line of code needs to be ended with a semicolon. The shader we'll be creating needs to run for each and every pixel on our sprites, and this is done inside of the fragment method, which we'll create by saying void fragment. A few more differences already. The void here is the return type for the method. Godot's shading language is statically typed, which means that the variables and methods that we use need to have their type defined, unlike in GDScript where a variable could be anything at any time. Think of this as the static typing features that were added to Godot in 3.1. Also we're required to enclose our code blocks within curly brackets. We won't be getting into this, but this is also true for things like if conditions and various types of loops that you may use. The goal of this shader is to take the sprite's color, a value between 0 and 1, and use these to blend our natural color with the flash color. To do this, we first need the color for this particular pixel. We can get this color by saying vector 4 color equals texture, texture, uv. That vec4 here is like a vector 2, but 4, so don't get too excited. And the texture constant is something that Godot provides us with so that we can access the graphic of our sprite and the UV just tells Godot where to find the pixel in the texture that we want to use. To set this as our color, we simply say color equals color. Well, well, of course nothing has changed. We just said color equals color. If I pointed to Paul Bear over there and said cartoon bear, I sure hope I wouldn't be blowing your mind either. If you must test that the shader is actually doing something though, then we can play around with this color property. For example, we could remove the blue from the pixel by saying color.b equals 0.0, .0 and you'll notice that the sprite's color changes. Also notice the 0.0, .0 here. Color is a vector 4, and the vector 4's value are strictly floats. Recall the whole statically typed bit. We are required to use float values here, which we do by making it a decimal value. Also notice the B here. This is what defines the blue value of this color. We can also use R for red, G for green, and A for alpha. When you're satisfied, remove that line of code and we'll move on. Now we need to modify our color so that it flashes. For this shader, we're going to allow the possibility of defining a color externally, in case you ever want to have a different colored flash. We'll do this by creating a uniform variable outside of our method. Specifically, we're going to say uniform vec4 flash color hint color vec4 1.0. The vec4 1.0 is the color white, since it will be setting the red, green, blue, and alpha to 1.0. If you want to define something else as the default color, then vec4 can take four arguments for each of these values. The hint color bit is for Godot, and lets us set a color when we're setting the shader's parameters. We also need a value between 0 and 1 that tells the shader how much of a flash to apply to our sprite. So we'll define another variable by saying uniform float flash modifier hint range 0 to 1 0.0. .0. Nothing really exciting here, but the hint range will help us when setting our value externally, and keeping it between the values that we want. Now we have the information we need to create our flashing shader, which is as simple as saying color.rgb equals mix color.rgb 
flashcolor.rgb flash modifier. This method takes the first argument and mixes it with the second argument by the giving amount defined by the third argument. So a flash value of 0 0.5 will have a 50% mixture of the two colors. Also notice that we're only setting the RGB values here. We don't want to mix the alpha value, otherwise the transparent pixels in our sprite will stop being so transparent and eventually become a solid block of color. And that's it for our shader. Now we need to animate this, which is as simple as animating the parameters in our shader's parameter section. You can do this with whatever animation method you prefer, and Animation Player works great here. Now one of the things that you're going to notice is that the shader is going to apply to everything in your game. And while it would be OP to damage everything in the game with one hit, we only want to apply this effect to each individual entity. The reason this happens is because the shader's material is a reference, which means that it is not unique to our character by default. Instead, it's shared amongst everything that uses this material. We can fix this easily enough by enabling the local to scene property in our material. This will make the shader material unique to each scene instance and not affected by the other materials. If you want to put this shader to practical use by applying it when an entity takes damage, then watch this video on how to handle health and hazards. And if you're new, then join the sub club to get notified for future videos.